Today, I'll be showing you how, why, and when you should use Pearson's product moment relationship coefficient. So why do we use this test? Well, it's more accurate than the Spearman's rank test, which you can see in another video. And instead of ranking the data, it actually uses the actual value. It assumes there is something common to both data sets. So in the case of uh, investigation, it could be that you've collected two, bits of two different types of data at a location, and that location is found at different points along the river. So what unifies those two data sets is the site locations, the distance along a river or a transect. And so what it is, is the test to see if that relationship did not happen by chance. There is actually a relationship between the two in real life. So like any statistical test, it all begins with a hypothesis. And in this case, an example of a, that was a data collected along a river was that there is a relationship between discharge of the river and bed load size. The null hypothesis being there is no relationship between the river discharge and bed load size. Again, we need to pick out the variables that we're going to test. Variable one is the discharge, variable two is bed load size. And just remember that we use Pearson because there is a shared variable between the two data sets. The shared variable being distance downstream. This data was collected at, two, uh, at various sites. So here is the data. So based on geographical theory, discharge should increase with distance downstream due to uh, more water being added to the river, so the river has more energy to erode the sides of the river, and it, so it has to have more space to contain that water. And bed load size should decrease with distance downstream. That is because as the river has more energy, it has more energy to erode. There are other erosional processes that are helping the, the rocks carried by the river to become smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's find out if this is true. So again, in the, in the description of this video, there you can find a link to the Excel spreadsheet that you can download and remember with um, this statistical test, you don't necessarily need to know how to calculate it, but you need to be aware of what the value means once you've calculated it and why you've selected this statistical test. So continue watching, please, to find out how to use this uh, the spreadsheet I've shared with you to calculate the Pearson's product moment coefficient. Okay, so I've, again, with my calculator, I've put in the null hypothesis to remind me, I've put in the alternative hypothesis, and I've got my variables. So now I'm going to copy and paste in the data that I have collected. So I go back up to my data, I put it in here, copy and paste. And I can see, right, okay, it's put the graph in for me. So again, I'll change the Y and the X axes. I'll put in a title. And it says here, number of pairs dated 12, degrees of freedom 11. And it's given me a result of minus, point, of ni minus 9.25. And it says, and it's turned both these boxes green. So let's find out what that all means. So what does this result actually mean? As now I've got 12 sets of data, got 11 degrees of freedom, and it's turned both these boxes green. So if I had my little graph here, a perfect negative relationship and perfect positive relationship, my result falls here. It's almost a perfect negative relationship. That means it implies that as the discharge increases, the mean bed load size decreases. So I'm ignoring the minus sign. And so my result has exceeded these two values. That means because both of them are turned green, I can choose the highest significance or confidence level to reject my hypothesis. If both of them are turned red, it means I had to reject my high null hypothesis. If only the 95% turn red, I could only accept it at 95% level. That means that there's something slightly wrong with the data, or there's too many anomalies, anomalies, or I didn't collect enough results. So, because both turn green, I can say with 99% confidence or significance that this data did not happen by chance, that there is a relationship between the discharge of the river and the mean bed load size. The relationship being, as discharge increases downstream, the mean bed load size should decrease, does decrease downstream. But if I had to accept the null hypothesis, it probably meant that I probably had too few sites. Because the more sites you have, the better. It kind of overcomes maybe one or two sites that could be an anomaly. And also, it gets me thinking about what actually happened before I collected the data. Was there anything there that might have influenced the results being collected? So, for example, was there a drought? Was there a period of 
low rainfall, which could affect the amount of water in the river. COVID, if I was doing a human investigation, did something COVID meant that there'd be almost no people there in town. So that's why I have so I have very sparse data in my results. Or has something been built that is influenced the dates, the river, for example, like a bottling plant or something else, which might impact the data I have collected. These are all the various things that you will need to consider if you're if you have to accept the null hypothesis. So please do do further reading about this to understand it better. If you're unsure, remember this video sh simply shows you how that calculator works. You do need to go and do some extra research and I've put some further links on your screen and in the descriptor. Thank you for watching.